is good to go is with the newest market report for November is you see the numbers and I talk about this every single month is that when the numbers are actually compiled, it's compiled 30 days to 45 to 60 days after it actually happens. So in other words, the market happens and then you have a couple of weeks to compile all the data and then you actually get the report. So right now we're kind of think we're actually looking into the past. Uh, that's good and that's bad. That's good because you understand the trend over time, but that's bad because an example is this week we had three new buyers come into our lives I introduced them immediately right into the banker at Wells Fargo, Alyssa Danzig, who we work with. And then we had another property in Gramercy that received two offers that went really close to the asking price when there was really no activity for weeks. So on a sales side, you got you to gotta list it at the right price. We're going to be going over the numbers on Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens like we do every single month. Obviously, if you want to get involved in the email, you can. That's gonna have historic over the last month and obviously this month. So Manhattan, it's down still and it is down 4% year over year. This is all year over year, not month over month. It's year over year. And again, I mentioned it a couple of times to some folks that I you know, talk to on a regular basis. And I said, hey, listen, you know, seven out of the last eight quarters, the pricing has been going down. There are buyers. Let me just turn off the music that was going on. I don't want to get any copyright strikes on uh, YouTube. <laughs> don't don't want to afford to pay whoever was just playing on uh, on the background. But Manhattan, the biggest thing is really the next thing that I'm going to be talking about, which is eight percent more homes. So more homes are still coming on the market. This is year over year. Eight percent more homes are on the market. The pricing is still going down. Seven out of the last eight quarters have been sliding price wise. So there's only one quarter that the price has probably increased due to maybe new development activity that has closed or something along those lines. The average days on the market is 110 for Manhattan. That's crazy long. And what you should be looking at if you're a buyer is, this is very reminiscent, as I was saying actually two weeks ago to a buyer, is that this is very reminiscent to 2009 when I was a real estate agent. Except at that time, the banks were not lending. This time, the banks are lending. They are lending incredible rates, 3%, 3.25%. If you do an arm or obviously if you go a little above that and you do a 30-year or fixed of 15 year, you're gonna be paying a little bit more. Brooklyn has been flat. So Brooklyn has been skyrocketing for the last couple of months. Manhattan has been sliding for the last couple of months. Uh, North Brooklyn was really the biggest uh, increase and pretty much dragging Brooklyn higher and higher and higher, just based on all the new development. Obviously the good news about the L train that they're not gonna be shutting it down for two years. But this is the one not so good news is that there's 12% more homes on the market than last year. Again, if you're looking at the Econ 101, the classes that I did not do well in, my teachers are probably rolling over at their desks right now that I'm talking about economics and how bad I was at economics. But if you look at the basis, there's not enough buyers for all of the supply, so that's the pricing. And if you don't price it at the right price, it's gonna sit. I just got off the phone with someone else. Uh, there's two owners on this townhouse on the Upper West Side. The father wants to sell it at a higher price. The son is fine for just trading it at the market value. And that's what you're really gonna be going against. It's If you need to sell, then it's 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 not the 2017, 2016 building record that your J line sold for. It's the number that recently sold, whether it's price per square foot, if it's in a condo, price per share. I also had a call yesterday with another buyer who was saying a property that we have priced right around 2,000 a square foot is actually should be 1,600 a square foot. It is completely unrealistic. In, in those eyes. But if you consider it, that's where buyers are coming from. You don't need to have a deal to get your property sold, but you do have to have it historically in alignment to roughly 2014, 2015 numbers. So Brooklyn, 93 days on the market. Queens, again, that's also flat. New days, 
or new homes for Queens year over year, 11%. So Manhattan is up 8% on new homes, 12% for Brooklyn and 11% for Queens. Days on the market, 72 for Queens, 93 for Brooklyn, and 110 for Manhattan. Um, obviously, those are trending pretty much the exact same way that they historically have been. Queens, not as popular as Brooklyn, not as popular as Manhattan. So obviously, there's going to be drastic numbers when it comes to Manhattan. The one thing I have to say about Queens is obviously you have a ton of new development in Long Island City, Astoria area, right along the waterfront. Um, even going further in, just a lot of townhouses are, are changing hands and there's a lot of land being purchased. And, the, and one thing I'm also going to mention with Manhattan is that it still went down, but Brooklyn and Queens is flat. And one of the biggest things that you have to consider is that if it's flat from last year, is that the bottom? Okay. You know, a lot of people say, I think it's going to continue going down for another, you know, five or six years, or it's going to be continuing going down until at least 2021, 20, 2022. Nobody knows. Nobody knows the actual bottom until it's behind you and i'm saying hey listen manhattan just went up brooklyn just went up queens just went up i think we reached the bottom we only know when we're actually reporting on the figure figures but the one good sign and i'm going to send it to my owners right after this the one good sign is that you're seeing people enter the market as educated buyers knowing that it's a good time to buy and those are the early adopters those are the people in the beginning that essentially they start the trend of actually buying. They start the trend. It's not cool to buy until everyone's saying it's cool to buy, but that's actually not the best time to buy. That might be in the middle or the top of the market. In the beginning part of the market is when you want to buy. Um, even if you miss it, and really this is just a bullish note to all those people that are considering or thinking about buying, is that if you are one of the folks that is hesitant about buying, okay? If you look at the two years, 2010 or 2009, 2010, right around there, uh, you looked at just a slowdown in Manhattan. If you looked before that, 10 years before that, obviously after 9-11, yes, but even before that, dot com, and then before that, it's a two year slowdown, and then it, it, it kind of starts going up, and then it's a hockey stick curve. And that hockey stick curve is probably going to be 2020, 20, but it's going to really start uh, doing a lot of good things in 2021. In that spring, the election's going to be over. We've been sliding low enough for eight, uh, seven quarters, seven out of the last eight quarters. So if you're interested in buying or selling, shoot us a call. Give us a, a note, and we'll give you exactly what we give all new buyers, which is the lay of the land, historically, why it's a good time to buy. And obviously, <laughs> if you have your home on the market, that seller needs to sell. So... If you guys have any questions, shoot me an email, charles at boatinston.com. Have an amazing day. And as always, we are open to any um, referrals. If you're an agent and if you're a buyer or seller, we can sit down further and obviously discuss your needs. Have an amazing day. Talk to you guys soon.